Welcome back. You're watching World Inside. I'm Tian Wei. This program coming to you Monday to Friday on CGTN. The Global Mobile Internet Conference is hosted annually in Beijing and Silicon Valley, with the 2018 gathering underway in Beijing and set to run through Saturday. This year, it is about AI, which is apt for China's rapidly developing AI or artificial intelligence technology sector. Take a look. In 2017, the industry received about 28 billion U.S. dollars in investment and financing. The government also unveiled its AI development plan last year. The goal is for the value of core AI companies to surpass 24 billion U.S. dollars by 2020. Chinese companies are also funding practical approaches to AI. Apart from investing in driverless cars, internet giant Baidu is also working on speech recognition. It's teaching its AI system to process spoken words. China's biggest ride-hailing company, DD, is focusing on machine learning and computer vision. China-based manufacturers are also opting for related fields in AI and consumer robots. Yunji Technology is developing service robots for hotels. These robots take voice commands from humans and can give orders to other machines. For more on the Global Mobile Internet Conference, we have a very strong panel in Beijing, Andy Mark, who is the president of the Red Pagoda Resources. Welcome, sir, in Washington, D.C. We want to welcome Ernest McDuffie, the founder of Global McDuffie Group. And in Singapore, we are joined by Bart Solman, who is a professor of computer science at Cornell University and fellow of American Association for Artificial Intelligence. I want to welcome to the thrill of you. Let me go to you, Mr. Solman, first. Since you are a member of the Artificial Intelligence Committee in the U.S., some say this is a key word for attracting investment. Therefore, even PIX is already flying in the air as a result. You see a lot of risks potentially over there. What do you think, Professor? Yes, uh, sorry, I missed one thing you said about the, the flying in the air. Was yes, they say, we in China we say the flying pigs, the pigs are already flying in the air as a result of this beautiful but wind of artificial intelligence. So hmm. people say actually there's a lot of potential risks. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, uh, this is one of the an important concern of the uh, artificial intelligence research community and the artificial intelligence organizations that, that oversee the research. Um, and we are having currently uh, so-called ethics and AI discussions uh, to look at these risks and to look at the role of humans uh, among intelligent machines and to try to make sure that these machines will do what we want them to do and will act in our interest. But, uh, but Professor, may I, just, uh, may I just, may I just follow up by saying that we don't even know how, the, sure. how that dark box works, so-called. Mm. You know what I'm talking about when it comes to artificial intelligence. So uh, how would you make sure that it's going to work yeah. on the ethical term? Uh, uh, is this empty promise or is this uh, wishful thinking? Um, no, it, 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 it is actually, a, it, there are things feasible, it, it, again, it is, a, it is a new field, but uh, we know things about, uh, we have quite a good understanding of ethics, of, of, of human uh, uh, values, and so one thing we're looking at is you, you're going to need to train a, a deep neural net and, and it will do certain tasks and, and it's hard to understand how it works. But you can still develop other technology around that neural net um, that will try to analyze does the behavior of the system stay within the desired boundaries. Mm. So it's a challenging problem, but it's, it's not an open uh, issue. Uh, you can actually put, put boundaries on these systems and analyze what they do. Uh, it, right. It's still in an early stage, but okay. I'm, I'm confident actually that we'll get much better at that. All right, Mr. McDuffie, of course, the other people would argue that yeah. people yeah. talk too much about the danger and the challenge of artificial intelligence. It's not fair. It's just one form of technology. It really depends on how human beings are taking advantage of this technology. Do you agree with these kind of thinking and assessment? Yes, yeah, sure. The um, challenge of the new technology is the same with any new technology. It's how, how it's used, how human beings uh, use the technology as it develops. Uh, with artificial intelligence, though, you're looking at a, a potentially new phenomenon uh, that the intelligent systems themselves will 
cross a threshold where they'll start making their own decisions about you know how they want to use themselves. There's a uh, the potential for the emergence of self-awareness uh, out of these systems that would take it completely out of our control. I think that that's probably the threat that concerns people the most. It's probably a ways off, um, you know, time-wise, 20, mm -hmm. 30, maybe 40 years or so. Uh, but I think that's the uh, the real threat. Mm. But on the other hand, the time stretch that uh, the other two gentlemen, Andy, have been talking about seem to be quite some time. Uh, but uh, during this process of some time, a lot of things could happen. And if the AI is developing with its own uh, logic, as well as uh, doing things with its own so-called intelligence, uh, actually we could face a lot of different uh, scenarios even seen from today? Well, I think that's true, and I know I, it's true that some experts believe that these scenarios are decades away, but I think it's also important to recognize that AI is developing at an exponential rate, mm. and humans are notoriously bad at predicting that kind of growth. So we look at something like Moore's Law, where processing power doubles every 18 months, mm -hmm. that people 30, 40 years ago, very few would have imagined that we would have a supercomputer in our pocket. Mm -hmm. And I do know that some uh, researchers and scientists believe that actually these developments in artificial intelligence are happening much more quickly than many people believe. Right. On the other hand, though, we do see case studies such as Facebook and what Facebook has been facing its accusations, accusations coming to it, uh, you know, about the presidential election, about how uh, through backdoor information of their clients are being lost, uh, and about how there has been a very vague boundary about uh, private information. Uh, Facebook, mm -hmm. if it is facing that, the other networks and the other platforms are all facing the same problem. <laughs> so if Facebook cannot find a mm -hmm. ultimate solution, or the others cannot negotiate out a mm -hmm. ultimate solution based on technology, how can sectors mm -hmm. regarding this be able to be further developed? Professor Solomon. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so I think you raised a very, very important point. Uh, in, in my sense, we, we don't even need full artificial intelligence to already see some, some real difficulties emerge, and Facebook is an example of that. Uh, a lot of the problems with Facebook are caused by algorithms that drive news distribution, that drive uh, the distribution of information that are not fully understood by the humans that even were running Facebook were, were somewhat surprised by what Facebook was spreading about uh, in, in terms of news, etc. So one direction we're seeing is we're trying to now develop AI type technology, machine learning type technology to try to control that type of flow of information. I would stress these, these algorithms are actually not particularly smart, they're just very general mm. and very widespread. Um, so I think humans will have to start uh, coming to terms with the fact that these new network of information systems, these connected computer networks, are l giving us new opportunities but also risks uh, that we have to understand better. Mm -hmm. and, and they're not even that smart, they're just very powerful. But here's the thing, Mr. McDuffie, you know and what I I'm talking about because you're working... Yes, mm -hmm. Mr. McDuffie, you know what I'm talking about because you're working on the security issue a lot over the decades. So here's the thing, you got a lot of talents jumping themselves into this big pool of developing AI and the application of AI because it, that's where you know, they're fascinated about and that's where the money comes from and that's where the public would go you know, for all these interesting fascinations. Uh, but on the other hand, when it comes to security, when it comes to legislation, uh, these are all dirty works not many people will be fascinated about. And sometimes you really wouldn't really, you know, attract much applause, even if you have already achieved something. So, Dr. McDuffie, how should we see these two now, two very different phenomena going on at the same time? Is there a way to make it happen, and make it happen in the right way? So, yeah, you're absolutely right. There are a number of uh, phenomena that are occurring simultaneously and the interesting aspects are where they intersect. Uh, you mentioned cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. There's actually a lot of uh, research and uh, applied research in, in that intersection going on right now around the globe 
where you're going to apply the tools of AI uh, to the problems of uh, cybersecurity to help uh, mitigate uh, those issues. So there's, there's actually, you know, part of the sub technical solution for cybersecurity comes from marrying the uh, latest AI techniques with the huge amount of data that's being generated globally that mm. affects uh, security in all kinds of a aspects. So again, there's, there's positives and negatives out of what can come out of the technology. I, I think the most important thing that we can do from a, a legislative uh, uh, perspective or right. from a national perspective is to be aware of the global nature of these phenomena. I, I think see. we make a mistake if we, if we tend to focus internally on what, what we're doing in the United States or what's happening in China or what's happening in Japan in isolation. You have to look at the totality of uh, particularly from the scientific uh, academic community is a global Absolutely. community and as long as you're uh, below the uh, class classified level of national security you the free flow of information is pretty uh, is pretty standard and 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 well established mm -hmm. and I think that's where uh, okay. the real new innovations and uh, leap forwards are going to come all right mr. Ma before we go I do follow, follow up about that there are different value systems in different countries, different cultures, different systems. So how to make sure in the issue of artificial intelligence that can be overlooked or can be overstepped in a way, not become a, a obstacle, but rather be a more phenomenon that in which everybody could work together. Mr. Mark, I want you to handle that big question very briefly if you can. Okay. Sir. Well, I think it's important to learn from best practices and I think if we look at Facebook uh, as an example, China is, was actually seen to be incredibly far-sighted uh, in preventing these kind of fake news and the impact that technology can have on society. So I think artificial intelligence is the same way. There are unintended consequences and it just looks at what we have to understand which governments, which systems are best suited to anticipating these and learn from those. Mm. Well, we are running out of time, but certainly that discussion about artificial intelligence is likely to be with us for a long time. But for now, thank you so much, gentlemen, for being with us. Andy Mark, Ernest McDuffie, and also Bart Selman. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And that is all the time we have for today. If you'd like to see more, try to find us, World Inside CGTN, into your search engine. Or check out our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Sina Weibo. From me, Tian Wei, and everyone on the World Inside team, thanks for watching. Tune in again next time for insights across China and around the world. Good night.